Right, hi guys, and welcome to another episode of the Moaning Yorkshire Man, and in particular, another Life on the Road episode. Uh, you seem to really enjoy the first one about breaking into hotels, so I thought, you know, best do another one just to keep you entertained. Uh, this one's going to be just about one incident in particular, and perhaps just a generalisation of uh, things that go wrong at airports. Uh, but the main incident I'm going to be on about is when we almost missed our flight. Now, I think people are going to be thinking, oh yeah, I bet I bet he had loads of time really, I bet he's just over exaggerating this. And the answer to that is no, we literally got on the plane and they shut the door behind us. So, yeah, it was interesting. So, uh, it was going to Heathrow, well we were arriving at Heathrow, so we were driving to Heathrow Airport. Uh, and then from there, uh, we were uh, flying to Budapest. So, we uh driving to Heathrow, uh, we'd allowed plenty of time so we had about two and a half hours from when we got to the car park to actually get there and uh, before us fly you know so we'd allow plenty enough time or so we thought um, we hit a bit of traffic whilst traveling and we ended up then with only about an hour and a half before us flight uh, we had about an hour's worth of delays but yeah we had about an hour and a half then before our flight would take off uh, when we arrived at the car park so we're looking for this car park, and uh, as boss had booked the, uh, the car parking, so as usual it was just the cheapest possible, and it was called Purple Parking, so we thought, oh, this is alright, I mean, if you've never been to Heathrow, it's absolutely massive, there's five terminals for God's sake, so there's lots of parking. So we found a Purple Parking, but didn't know how to get to the car park, uh, eventually found the car park. Uh, to be found, to be informed that this was the business purple parking car park. So we're like, oh shit. Right, so how do you get to the other one? Oh, it's literally five minutes away, mate, just down this road and turn left. All right, yeah, cheers, buddy, no problem. So obviously we weren't in business purple parking. Uh, and then we kept going down this road and there was no left turn coming up and we're like, oh, you are fucking joking. This is going to take a while. So we had about... I think we had about an hour left um, when we reached the first car park, eventually. So you can imagine getting to the next one. Um, we then literally, I think we finally got there and we were fucking running around like dickheads at this point and driving like dicks just to try and get to the car park. We got to the car park uh, and found out that it was a bus that just waited there until the bus was full because it just was cheaper for them uh, with it being a cheap car parking company um, and we got there with about 45 minutes left and we're like oh you're fucking joking just hurry up just go just bus just go just go for fuck's sake just go um, to which he replied oh yeah we'll just wait for the bus to be full mate shouldn't be too long now lads I'm like we've got 45 fucking minutes to catch this bus you know uh, there's me and a colleague and we're like fucking flapping uh, he eventually sets off with 35 minutes left to get the flight and it took us about 35 minutes to actually just get from near the airport to the car park. So it took the bus about 30 minutes. I think he obviously had a direct route. But it took him about 30 minutes for the bus to get from the car park to the airport. Meanwhile, while we're on the journey, we're obviously like, we come on, fucking hell, come on. We've not got, no, oh, we're not going to make this flight, mate. We're not going to make this flight. We've missed this. We've missed this. We're not going to make it. What we're going to do, we're going to have to catch later flight. I don't know how you do it. It's a different air, it's a different airline as well, next flight. Oh, God's sake. Uh, so we're flapping because we've got no time at all to spare. And the people in front of us were, obviously, I mean, they must have heard us fucking flapping. Uh, and their response, well, it wasn't a direct response, they weren't talking to us, but they were just talking in general, and they were like, oh yeah, Ethel, um, I think by the time we arrive, we'll have about three hours before we uh, need to take off, because I know it always says leave about three hours time, just so you can get through security and things. <laughs> we're like, fucking hell, come on, bus, just go faster, we've got no time at all to catch this fucking bus. Oh, God, it was so stressful. Um, and then during the journey, we came to the realisation of we're not going to make the flight, so there's no point running when we get off. Um, so, you know, we sort of resigned ourselves to the fact of, look, we just have to sort out later flight when we get there. Um, and then what really knocked us off was the bus driver knew that we were rushing for time and we needed to get to Terminal 3. But he stopped at Terminal 2 first to drop the people off that had three fucking hours! They had three hours to get the flight! 
and they dropped them off first and then went round to Terminal 3. We're like, fucking hell, come on! Hurry up for fuck's sake. And then we finally get to Terminal 3 and we have literally got seven minutes. And I'm not joking, it's a literally seven minutes. Not before gate closes or anything. Gate were already shut as far as the signs were concerned. It was seven minutes before that flight was going, see ya, we're off. So we're like, shall we run, shall we not run, shall we run? And we got into the airport, just steady stroll in, thinking about it. And we're like, fuck it, we'll try and make it. So we absolutely legs it, and I mean legs it. Honest to God, why, why we didn't get stopped by security, I don't know, because we were just fucking barging through everyone, and like, I overtook some old grannies round the outside on the set of escalators. Didn't have time to put me bag, you know, uh, didn't have time to pick me bag up or anything, it was just fucking coming with me up the steps. So up the escalators, <laughs> going like, fuck it all, come on, mate, come on, we've not got time, just keep going, just keep going. We get to the security, luckily it wasn't busy, but we're still overtaking people and just like, fucking hell, move out of the way, mate, we've got literally six minutes to catch this flight now, you know, just come on, get out of the way, get out of the way. So he pushes himself to the front of what queue there was at security, and then obviously while you're flapping, you're just throwing everything in, you're not doing it properly, you're not taking your liquids out your bag, and you're just like, God, I need to calm down here and get this right, otherwise we're going to be ages. So we text it, we manage to sort ourselves out, and then we get to the other side, putting your belt back on again, you're like, fucking hell, come on, come on, Jesus Christ. And we just literally just runs. As soon as we got that, we didn't put the trays back or anything, obviously, we had like four minutes left after about three or four minutes. And we're literally running, but then we didn't know where we were running to. We were just stuck running round in circles in duty free, going, where the fuck's the terminal? Where's the gate? Where's the gate? And we ended up asking a woman at a Rolex shop that was in the duty free, like, "Where's? How do you get to gate 22, love? How do you get to gate? Oh, it's over there, to your left, then to your... Fuck it, just go, come on. And she said roughly where it was, just go. And we're running, and we're running, and uh, my mate uh, uh, was obviously quite a lot um, fitter than me. Um, <laughs> And he, I just resided myself to the fact, look, he's, he's in charge. He can stop a plane if I'm a bit late. So, I mean, we got to a hill and I was just fucked. And I was like, <gasps> <gasps> honest to God, gasping for breath. It was horrendous. Um, and <laughs> luckily I see, I see uh, my colleague, he manages to get to the gate and the woman's still there checking password. I think, fucking hell, right, one final sprint. So I runs there. Bearing in mind we're on a BA flight, which wasn't very often that we ever got BA, but it's not really a good impression showing up hot and sweaty and panting for breath. And uh, she's like, have you got your boarding pass? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Passport, yeah. <laughs> What's it? What, where are you? Why are you travelling today? <laughs> don't care. Don't care. I don't care where or why I'm travelling. Just put me on the plane. <laughs> Honest to God, I've never been so knackered in my life. I just sprawled myself over the checking desk and was just dying. And uh, we eventually get on the plane and literally they shut the door behind us. Uh, and we found out that a colleague was going to be sat next to us uh, who made his own way to the airport. And he was there just casually with the headphones on, listening to some music. And he sees us absolutely gasping for air as if we've died. And he just takes his headphones off and just goes... Uh, did you have to run, lads? Like, <gasps> fuck off. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> oh, God. <gasps> oh. But luckily, you get free drinks on, it, on BA. So once the uh, flight had took off, uh, I think they realised how bad our flight, uh, you know, how bad our journey were getting there. And they couldn't stop laughing at us, the cabin crew, which was fair enough. It was all banter. And, um, yeah, they ended up giving us, like, loads of water and orange juice and stuff just to help us catch his breath, which was decent of him, so, you know, that was that's what you get with the uh, proper flights, though, rather than fucking Ryan Scare or Sleazy Jet. Um, but, yeah, we have, we made it anyway, which was the main thing, definitely the main thing that we got there, so that was decent, we finally got there. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that was that was a moment to savour, really, especially overtaking the grannies round the outside. That was, that was a decent effort, that. With my bag, like, fully on opposite lock, it was just... It was trying to follow me as best it could. Uh, but, I mean, generally, just with, like, airlines and stuff, I mean, we obviously flew quite a lot with, like, the Ryan Scares and the Sleazy Jets. Um, and we had one plane uh, that was a Sleazy Jet and honestly thought I was going to die. I thought this plane was going to fall out of the sky. Um, we, we got in and the straight away there was a flickering light that had not, like, 
obviously it not turned itself on properly or the bulb had gone, it was just flickering on and off and I've hated to have been sat there at the side of that one for all that time. Um, and then I sits down, and as I sits down, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever seen Final Destination, the first one, but when he sits down on the flight, he tries to open the, f the tray, the tray table, and the knob falls off that holds it in place. That happened to me. I was just literally getting on, getting into my seat, and I knocked it, and it fell off, and my tray table just came down. I'm like, seen this in a film, and it doesn't end well. I'm not, not loving this at the moment. Uh, and not to mention, one of the toilets were out of order as well. And not only that, but there was a... Um, there was a, you know, the luggage, the baggage and holders at the top, the uh, cabin lockers. Uh, the one that was just a row in front of me had been taped up the door, and um, I mean, fair enough. Obviously, it wasn't operational. But why on earth was it taped up with yellow tape with black warning triangles on that said radioactive on it? Doesn't fill you full of confidence. And I said to the uh, cabin crew, I said, what's up with that locker then? Is there something in it? She went, oh no, um, the catch broke on landing, uh, so the door just flew open. Uh, so we got the maintenance man on, but he didn't have the correct catch to be able to fix it with, so he just taped it up. I'm like, and the maintenance guy only has radioactive tape then. I'm not convinced by this statement at all. You're telling me that a maintenance guy for an aircraft only has tape that says radioactive written all over it and fucking chemical warning symbols on it. Doesn't fill me full of confidence at all, this love. Uh, but in the end, it was... Obviously, I survived. I'm still here. But Jesus Christ, that was just horrendous. Absolutely horrendous, that one. That I thought I, genu I genuinely thought we were going to fall out of the sky. I was just like, well, no, I can do about it. Today's my day. <laughs> but, yeah, that was horrendous. That was horrendous. And then, uh, airline food. What was it about that thing? Uh, yeah, we uh, we ended up running for another flight. It wasn't as late, but we just meant we couldn't get any food at the airport. So we ended up getting a fucking cheese toasty sandwich on a Ryan Scare flight. And we thought, oh, we'll have a meal deal. And, yes, it was by far the shittiest thing I've ever tasted in my entire life. Uh, the toasties arrived. It was meant to be a ham and cheese toasty. But I have never had something that was so moist yet so dry. It was soggy but dry. It was horrendous. And it had like some fucking mustard shit on the top just to try and moisten it up a bit more. I couldn't eat it. It was disgraceful. Uh, then we had crisps in a box. Which was like, why? All the fat and everything had just soaked into the bit, into the box of the crisp. And the crisps were fucking stale and cardboardy. And then we had a warm can of Coke. I was like, surely, surely an air, aeroplane has fridge. Has a fridge somewhere, you know. That was horrendous. That was horrendous. I was ill. I was ill the next day, and I blame it on the fucking soggy sandwich. So, never have food on an aeroplane, you know, unless it's like a really good one and you're flying first class or something. But Jesus Christ, it was horrendous. That was not good at all. Uh, but yeah, they're my main aeroplane stories, uh, and like I said, if you want some more of this series, I've got plenty more to tell you, so yeah, just let me know down below if you want any more, and yeah, I'll be happy to answer your questions um, and do another video at any point, so hope you enjoyed this one guys, and uh, we'll speak to you soon, much love.